usually supposed to be Tuesday. Today is wrong. That's what we're going to do with that. So, Reader's Right, you know, Reader's Right channel. I really like what I'm going to do with it on YouTube. Guess what? <laughs> we're going to have a conversation. We're going to start that conversation now. This video will go up on that channel and the Eon channel, but from now on, the videos dealing with the topics that I'm about to discuss will only go up on the Eon channel. So that's where you're gonna go because that's what that channel was designed for in the first place, explaining the things in the background. So everybody talks about, you just know so much, I don't know anything. Let me tell you what I know. I know that through the years, I told you when I was a child, my father would go and he would communicate with certain men. Now, these were not your men who were meeting in dark rooms or anything like that. The men he would communicate with were just people he knew in the neighborhood. Now, you heard of the Black Panthers? Well, this was the area of Watts where the Black Panthers hung out. 103rd Street. Okay, don't believe me. Go and do your research. Well, these men would get together and they would talk. Now, I got to give the Black Panthers some credit because they knew things. They did know things. And so they would just be sitting there and talking. And while my brothers and sisters were out there playing with whatever they could pick up to make into something interesting to play with or conversations they would have about nothing or chasing each other and that type of stuff, I would be the kid who would gravitate and go towards my father. Not because I was a daddy's boy, because I was far from that. My father and I honestly didn't get along. So I wasn't a daddy's boy, but I wasn't into childish games. And I'm telling you the truth, you had to pull my arm to get me to play games. But when I started seeing games like Monopoly or Life or Clue, and I started seeing that those games, hey, that required some thinking, those were the games I gravitated to. Those are the games I wanted to play, and those ironically enough, were the games nobody else wanted to play. Because I took Monopoly as if it was life, honestly. Because I understood it as a child. Anyway, or anywho. Now we segue to the fact that my father would allow me to be around him and his friends while they were talking, but my brothers and sisters would come over and ask me questions and we would get into a conversation while they were talking and he would say, boy, and the rest of y'all go and play. Thirty-seven years later, Speaking, it's funny how the mind works. My brain was fried. That stupid. Brain on fried, people. I'm one of those they use they and other industries like me to prove that when one side of the brain is damaged, the brain remaps itself. Ta da! And that situation with me. Ladies and gentlemen, as my brothers and sisters would choose not to sit and listen, I would choose to sit and listen. Now, sometimes my father would sit for hours. Sometimes he would just bring me and my brothers. And they would go off and play with the other kids if there were other kids around. And I would sit there and I would listen. Now, mind you, I couldn't ask questions. Of this group, I could not ask questions. Of this group, I could not ask questions. But as I told you, 
in the fourth grade, my mother decided after the fourth grade, from the fifth grade on, to bus up. Oh, so, no, y'all, y'all, no, 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 your mother went to auntie and uncle in Bel Air. Okay, so we could not go to the neighborhood school because that's not what she wanted for us. And my mother worked at the neighborhood school, okay? She was one of them teachers in the neighborhood school. Well, she was a teacher's assistant, but she was one of those teachers in the neighborhood school. She taught for 17 years. Now, mind you, her reason for going into teaching was me. My family didn't even know that. My family had no clue because they weren't there. My mother saw how disappointed I was that my brothers and sisters were going to school. My two sisters, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, who were younger than me were allowed to go to school and I wasn't. Why? Because I was bam, 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 bam. I was bam, bam from the Flintstones. Everything I touched, I destroyed. You talked about a strong kid. That was me. And I remember my preschool teacher, after three days of being in preschool, because, sorry, kids would hit me and I would hit them back. <laughs> and they would cry. And I'm like, in my mind today, I think you shouldn't have hit me. If you hit me, you deserve to get hit back, was a phrase that I had as a teenager. Ladies and gentlemen. Five-year-old kid going on six because I had to wait until I was five before I could get into school. And I remember the teacher saying, He's just too big and too strong for the other kids. I remember her saying that. She had no idea how much that hurt at me. Hurt it. Not hurt me. Hurt it me. She had no idea. As if it was my fault. Now, as I tell you, I'll say it again. They had no business hitting me. Yeah, that's what kids do, but they had no business hitting me. I didn't hit them first. That's what my father could tell you. I know that boy. He would never hit anybody first. My father was 100% right. I didn't sucker punch anybody, ever, because... That's not my mindset. It never would be my mindset. It never has been my mindset. We'll get into all that another time. But I want to talk about being on the public transit bus going to school. Getting on that bus, the kids who got on the regular public transit bus were not allowed to sit in the back. Sorry. The persons of color, the men, Oh, God, no. And if you were a child and you let a woman get on that bus and be standing and you didn't get up to give her your seat, man, if they didn't come and snatch you up out of your seat and tell you, boy, what you're doing, get your butt up and give that woman that seat. If you didn't think that that happened, then something's wrong with you. That's the world we came from. That world is gone. We will never see that world again anytime soon. So when the kids, even if the bus was crowded, when the kids would want to go back and sit back there with the adult men, oh no, uh -uh, get your butt up and get back here. You know how they talk about the back of the bus, going to the back of the bus? Well, they controlled the back of the bus. Y'all don't understand? I understand because I lived it. And then... I would listen to them, and I can tell you, I can recall a little bit, after one of the guys would get off the bus, and he got on at the same stop I got on, we would be waiting for the bus in the morning, and I would say, because they would go to work the same time I would be going to school. Yeah, I had to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, be on the bus by 5.45, be at school by 8. That's how long it took me. So while these guys are getting up and being on the bus at the exact same time because of the schedule of the bus, I would ask him, look, you guys were talking about blah, 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 and we would have a conversation. And then we'd get on the bus, that person would go to the back, and I would mind my own business. And 
I know that it was an incident where one day I was invited to sit back there with them. And he, don't remember the guy's name at all, would introduce me and they would tell me, the other guys, when he says, let him sit back here, he's okay. The other guys would say, yeah, he can sit back here, but he can't talk. He must keep his mouth shut. And they asked me, did I understand? And I said, yeah. And I would sit back there. Then eventually, the guy who I would get on with, because we would have conversations before we get on the bus, then he would say, look, I'm going to ask him his opinion. I want you guys to hear what he has to say. And that's how it started. Okay. So my knowledge of this is not from watching YouTube videos, people. My knowledge of this is talking to the people who knew this stuff when it was common knowledge amongst that group. There was a time when all of this was common knowledge. So I want y'all to listen to something for me for a second. Um, and I apologize to this man because I was, I listened to Alex Jones talk about man and vilify him when I had no evidence to the fact, okay? They said he was a plant and all of that stuff. I can't prove that to save my life. That's what happens when you listen to hearsay. I listened to that hearsay stupid stuff and I judged this man and I was wrong for it because I don't know. Even if he is, what enough do I care? What I know is that he spoke truth because when he spoke and I first heard him, I understood and I already knew what he knew. Many people have, in their ignorance, accused me of getting my information from people like him and parroting the information. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't get my information from people like him. Okay? I got my information before I ever knew of the person I'm about to show you. I know of Gene Elkins because Gene Elkins didn't just start teaching this stuff back in the early 2000s. Gene Elkins, I've known of Gene Elkins for quite some time. I knew of the name Gene Elkins because his name was one of those names that everybody would talk about. I knew of him before YouTube was even a company. So I'm not talking about Gene Elkins. I always had respect for Gene Elkins. You guys will hear me talk and speak nothing of positive things about Gene Elkins. I love Gene Elkins. Gene Elkins is all right. He, I just hate the fact that he's older now and he's gotten to that point to where it took this long for people to finally pay attention to him. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Been around you all of your life, you just didn't see it. A classic example, Abraham. The real truth has been around you all of your life, you just didn't see it. A classic example, Abraham Lincoln was elected to Congress in 1846. John Kennedy was elected to Congress in 1946. Lincoln was elected president in 1860. John Kennedy was elected president in 1960. The names Lincoln and Kennedy both contain seven letters. Both presidents were particularly concerned with civil rights. Both of the president's wives lost children while living in the White House. Both presidents were shot on a Friday in the head. President Lincoln's secretary was named Miss Kennedy. Kennedy's secretary was named Miss Lincoln. Both were assassinated by Southerners. Both were succeeded by Southerners. Andrew Johnson, who succeeded Lincoln, was born in 1808. Lyndon Johnson, who succeeded Kennedy, was born in 1908. John Wilkes Booth, who assassinated Lincoln, was born in 1839. Lee Harvey Oswald, who assassinated Kennedy, 1939. Both assassins were known by three names, John Wilkes Booth, Lee Harvey Oswald. Both names are comprised of 15 letters. President Lincoln was shot in a theater named Ford. Kennedy was shot in a car named Lincoln, made by Ford. John Wilkes Booth ran to a theater and was caught in a warehouse. Oswald ran from a warehouse and was caught in a theater. Booth and Oswald were both assassinated before they could go to trial. And a week before Lincoln was shot, he was in Moreau, Maryland. A week before Kennedy was shot, he was with Marilyn Monroe. I read you that to impress upon your minds that there is an occult world going on around you. 
If you are looking for the hidden knowledge, if you... Ladies and gentlemen, that was Jordan Maxwell. That was Jordan Maxwell telling you of the similarities between Lincoln and Kennedy. As a child, I already knew that these assassinations were plots, that they weren't just random assassinations. For instance, the president always had a security detail. Remember, um, well, not the first president, okay, <laughs> because he was a black man. Uh, anyway, not the first president, but that Washington character. He was a general, so you better believe he always had some type of protection around him. He always had somebody in the military around him. It would, it would be foolish for anybody to believe otherwise. <laughs> and so able to get close enough to him to shoot him. Because you go back and take a look at the guns back then. They were not accurate. So this claim that he was shot by John Wilkes Booth, John Wilkes Booth would have to have had access. Somebody would have to have known what he was doing. So yes, conspiracy, a plot. There was no other way it could happen. For instance, Lincoln being shot, somebody hitting in the grassy nose. Ladies and gentlemen, it is impossible for that vehicle to be a convertible, for him to be driving through without any protection, and to be shot in the head and he's the only one? I mean, right on target! Now, we know that there was more than one shot, but here we are. We weren't around. I wasn't around back then when he got shot. I was born a couple of years after Kennedy got shot. So I don't know. I wasn't watching it at that time. But just like the lunar landing, they are to have us to believe that the lunar landing consisted of this vehicle that was made with this new special metal that was just discovered. Do you know what the name of the new special metal that was just discovered at the time? Alunununununununum. That's right. The new special metal that the people were unfamiliar with was aluminum, and nobody knew aluminum. And I mean, it was they just started making it. It just started being developed, and the so-called lunar module was made out of aluminum. Ladies and gentlemen, aluminum does not protect you from radiation. Go ahead. There are three radiation belts between the Earth and the Moon. One of them a major radiation belt. So how in the world could they have survived? Go tell that Russian cosmonaut who was the first person to orbit, <laughs> and he died. The very first one Russia sent up, he died. Why? Man, he was baked. Radiation, man, he got cooked. I mean, you talk about flame, flame on, flame boiled. That's how they learned. So how is aluminum going to protect them from that? Even the so-called junk they send up in space now, you notice it's always on the dark side of the planet. The reason why it's always on the dark side of the planet because they cannot be on the sun side of the planet. Sorry. Too much radiation. That's why they use the Earth to shield them from the sun's radiation. That's why they can only stay up in space for so long because of the radiation in space, people. From the sun. It's a nuclear device, okay? Lord, have mercy. Look, can you go into a nuclear reactor and just cover yourself with aluminum because you don't want the aliens to hear what you're thinking? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Exactly. Why do you think they have the aluminum hats? Because aluminum was produced and publicized as being some special metal during the 60s. Don't believe me? Go do your research. Go do your research. And because it was touted as a special metal, <laughs> who knew that we would find out that it was nothing special about aluminum at all. I mean, we could get soda in cans with aluminum. We could get candy wrappers with aluminum. 
Uh oh, nano aluminum. Would you believe that aluminum actually has an effect on our health? A detrimental effect on our health? Aluminum. Hold on, I got something I want to show y'all. Give me one second. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a question I want to ask the system. It might take a second. In the 1960s, with the space program, comma, NASA developed these modules made out of what? Materials. Specifically, question mark. Stop listening. Gonna let her speak to y'all. In the 1960s, during the space program, NASA developed modules primarily constructed of aluminum alloy, titanium, stainless steel, and various composite materials. These materials were chosen for their lightweight properties, durability, and ability to withstand the harsh conditions of space travel. Additionally, specialized heat-resistant materials were used for components that encountered high temperatures during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Okay, you guys heard it, right? Aluminum alloy, titanium, and stainless steel. Metals. Okay, now we're going to start a new chat. Wake up. How many radiation belts are there between the Earth and the moon? Question mark. Stop listening. There are two main radiation belts surrounding the Earth, known as the Van Allen belts. These belts are regions of high-energy charged particles, primarily protons and electrons, held in place by the Earth's magnetic field. The belts extend from about 1,000 to 60,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. However, there are no known radiation belts between the Earth and the Moon. The Moon does not have a global magnetic field like Earth, so it lacks the ability to trap charged particles in the same way. Therefore, Spacecraft traveling between Earth and the Moon are not subject to the same radiation hazards as those traveling through the Van Allen belts. Wake up. Did I say anything about space travel? Question mark. Stop listening. I told y'all it listens to the conversation. Apologies for any misunderstanding. You didn't specify space travel explicitly in your question. Typically, when discussing radiation belts between the Earth and the Moon, it's in the context of space travel, as these belts can pose hazards to spacecraft. However, if you are asking about radiation belts in a different context, please provide more details, and I'll be happy to assist you further. Wake up! Without the sun as a shield, comma, the distance between the moon and the earth, comma, an individual would encounter heavy radiation, comma, and there are indeed radiation waves, comma, fields, comma, belts between the earth and the moon, comma, reformulate your answer to the context of my question and stop generalizing your answers because you're pissing me off. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. I apologize for any frustration caused. To directly address your question, between the Earth and the Moon, 
There aren't distinct radiation belts akin to the Van Allen belts surrounding SAA! The However, there is a zone of intense radiation known as the South Atlantic Anomaly, SAA, which extends from South America across the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> While not precisely a belt, this region is known for heightened radiation levels oh, and could be considered an area of concern for spacecraft passing through it on routes between Earth and the Moon. The, between, pay attention, South America and the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so that's between the Earth and the Moon. Lord have mercy. Y'all gotta, you gotta be kidding me. And some people will take that information and run with it because it provided that information. Look. All right, I apologize to the context of radiation between uh, without predict the shield of the sun. It is essentially clarified that there is indeed radiation hazard. However, they are known as radiation not there are no no known radiation belts or fields specifically between the Earth and the Moon, similar to the Van Allen belt. I didn't ask about the Van Allen belt. The journey from Earth to Moon exposes astronauts to forms of radiation, including solar and cosmic radiation. These radiations pose risk, but do not manifest a distinct belt like those surrounding the Earth. I never said anything about a belt surrounding the Earth. Okay, that's what it does, ladies and gentlemen. It changes the context of the question. So watch this. Wake up. Is it possible that these items are anti-radiation materials? Question mark. Stop listening. Aluminum alloy, titanium, and stainless steel are commonly used materials in various industries, including aerospace, construction, and medical devices. While they may possess certain properties that make them suitable for shielding against radiation to some extent, they are not typically considered as dedicated anti-radiation materials. <sighs> However, these materials can be used in radiation shielding applications due to their density and thickness. For example, lead is often used for radiation shielding because of its high density. But materials like aluminum, titanium, lead. and stainless steel can also provide some level of protection when used in sufficient thicknesses. Yes. It's important to note that the effectiveness of these materials in shielding against radiation depends on various factors such as the type and energy of the radiation, the thickness, and composition of the shielding material, and the specific requirements of the application. Specialized materials like lead, tungsten, and some polymers are often preferred for their superior radiation shielding properties in certain situations. Wake up! Did I say anything about lead? Question mark. I only stated colon Who gave you permission to deviate from the context of my question? Question mark. Lead has nothing to do with my question. Comma, so answer my question specifically, comma, directly, comma, without nuances and without caveats, you ignorant moron. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Stop listening. I apologize for any confusion. To answer your question directly, aluminum alloy, titanium, and stainless steel can be used for radiation shielding to some extent due to their density and thickness. While they are not typically considered dedicated anti-radiation materials like lead, they can provide some level of protection against radiation when used in sufficient thicknesses. Wake up. Were the materials of the lunar space program thick enough to travel through space with direct exposure to the sun and its radiation? Question mark. Stop listening. The materials used in the lunar space program, such as aluminum alloy, titanium, and stainless steel, were indeed chosen for their ability to withstand the rigors of space travel, including exposure to solar radiation. However, Direct exposure to the sun and its radiation can still pose risks to both astronauts and spacecraft. To mitigate these risks, 
spacecraft and spacesuits are typically equipped with various forms of radiation shielding, including specialized materials and design features. For example, spacecraft may have outer layers designed. Wake up. You ignorant idiot. Comma, did I say anything about current spacecraft? Comma, I said the lunar landing spacecraft of the 1960s. Comma, answer my question directly and specifically. Stop listening. Apologies for the oversight. The materials used in the lunar landing spacecraft of the 1960s, such as aluminum alloy, titanium, and stainless steel, were indeed chosen with consideration for their ability to withstand the harsh conditions of space travel and he's lying. exposure to solar radiation. He's lying. However, direct exposure to the sun and its radiation was minimized during the lunar missions through various means. Yeah, they had protective coating. Yeah, uh-huh. Protective coating. That makes sense, huh? All right, got to go, ladies and gentlemen, but we'll be doing videos telling you about the little different things that most people are unaware of concerning reality. Coming soon. Gotta go.